Hey everyone, thought I'd try my attempt at some game reviews and start off with an NES accessory that not many people have talked about and is probably the prototype to an accessory on the Wii. And the one I'm talking about is the Rollin' Rocker by LJN Toys. Released in 1988, this bulky controller is designed to be a giant defect and something you'd stand on to control the action using your body movements. An early version of the Wii Balance Board, if you think about it. There is a dark gray outer section with these little gray bumps designed to help keep your feet in place by the looks of it. You get a nice light big blue circle in the middle and dark cherry red letters for the name of the item. Pretty fascinating for an 80s controller and the first balance accessory, although rather hard to come by today. In the little information that could be found on the web for this collector's item, one blog I ran across covering this thing said there were complaints of entries using the NES rocker, and another said he bought it specifically for games such as Skate or Die due to his love for those types of games, and nearly put his head through his team from attempted use. So you can imagine why there'd be so many people complaining about the finicky nature of this LJM control and returned it in frustration. Now most of you watching this probably know of this honkin' light blue dark gray with, with red letters rarity item first off the AVGN NES accessories video where he tested 8 games to barely any success. However, there are some comments who speculate the one James Self received has a busted board since there does exist another video that goes into more detail. That second big video covering it is sold separately by Retroware TV Episode 1 who reviewed it as the pilot for their accessory series, and showed it working greatly with both Kung Fu and Rad Racer. My goal is to show this big Nintendo balance board working with a variety of games, as proof it does work, besides the time RetroWare TV did it. For games uh, as the test subjects of this video, we'll use a variety of games both from self use and some others for my picks. Starting off with choices James used, there is Adventure Island, Beetlejuice, Metal Gear, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 The Manhattan Project. Unfortunately, I sold off my copies of 1943 in the box, and will sold copies of Kung Fu and Insectable years ago that are unable to be tested here, but hopefully my other choices will do. These choices are Super Mario Brothers, The Legend of Zelda, Veracity Ransom, Final Fantasy, Tengen Tetris for an unlicensed game, Super Mario Bros. 2, Millipede, Galaga, Crystallis, Paperboy, Gotcha, The Spore, Spider-Man, Turn the Sinister Sticks, A Nightmare on Elm Street, Die Hard, and Super Mario Bros. 3. In keeping with the spirit of that AVG video, here is my top letter that all the games are going to be inserted in, as it is a better functional NES and the one he still used at that point for game recording. Two important things to note should you buy this and use this accessory for your collection. 1. You cannot weigh more than 100 pounds if you plan to stand on this board. Given that many collectors are usually in their 20s and 30s, weighing way more than that, just put the rolling rocker under your feet while you sit in the chair. Or in my case, my NES rocker is going onto my bed seated on my lap. 2. A regular controller is required in order to have the basic buttons still used for firing, pausing, selecting items, jumping, and on pausing. So plug your NES controls into this socket here. Now given I don't own any big fancy recording software, you'll need to put up with the camera recording me using it live, or a close up of the TV for better focus, but I think it works better so you can see it in action rather than just jump cups of game footage in between so you get the full live feed. Now since the footage is too hard to see away, here's a close-up of it. I'm going to unpause it. As you can see, it's still moving normally. Ah, uh, whoops.
Now, just for the record, uh, the Roland Rocker is not designed to be a full-on controller replacement. So keep this in mind, you need to use the buttons and on your regular NES controller to control the action because uh, this accessory was designed to just be a D-pad, not a full-on replacement like, say, the Power Glove, which had actual uh, finger movements. So let me show you getting a bit farther than James did on Beetlejuice. See? Ah! Oh. That maybe that wasn't the best turn. Now the, the problem. Now the major issue with being th this being like an early balance board is that moving is like very difficult. See, I'm going inside the house. This thing wobbles around quite a bit, so it's not really the most uh, well. How you can say a uh, uh, good use of of your money back then. On. Oh yeah, by the way, quick note, side note, uh, those lights will kill you in one hit, so, so don't uh, die. But I will say in kind of similar junction to the power glove is that it, uh, this accessory moves your character around a lot in places you don't want. And I just died. I'll just, I'll actually continue a bit further to show you how it's working. By the way, uh, let me demonstrate something for you uh, a bit further. The Roland Rocker does not turn off the D-pad uh, for, for games, so if you actually get this thing to stay still, you can actually get uh, uh, your character to move around using the standard controller. So let me show you a bit of it, uh, of, the, of the control pad actually working in action. See, this is me actually controlling Beetlejuice uh, using a regular controller uh, with the D-pad and not the Roland Rocker. As you can see, if you can tell, major difference. Okay, I think that's enough. Okay, so now we're going to uh, show you how Metal Gear works with this thing. Now, James Burr previously said that he couldn't get the character to move, but I'm going to show you that this one actually will work. Let's see? Moving up, moving down, left, I oh, sorry, I mean right, left, right, up, down, left, right. So, we move next to me. I'm going to punch that guy. Go down. As you can see, you can accomplish quite a bit if you actually get one that works. So as you can see from the little bit of I was able to do, that the Roland Rocker is capable of actually working. James probably just had a bad one, as people uh, speculated. All right, we're gonna try out Ninja Turtles 3, Manhattan Project. And, and much like uh, the nerds footage, we're going to be using Michelangelo. Okay, now you can see I'm able to move around quite easily. I'm not walking into place like his footage. And we're going to attack some enemies. Now remember, you have to hold you have to hold down B to do to do that flip move. And I'm just attacking like this. The Rolling Rocker gets a lot of its good use if you're playing games where you move in eight directions because that requires you to move it all the way around. Instead of just up, down, left, and right. See? 
it is quite capable of, 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 of playing with, of being able to be played with beat em ups. Though, in cases like that where I was jumping against the screen constantly, the movements are still kind of, well, erratic. Ugh. Okay, moving on to the games of my choosing, we're going to try Super Mario Bros. 3. Let's see uh, if I can get through the first level. Okay, got the mushroom. That wasn't so bad. And I remember again, you're seeing all this... Uh, no, I didn't want to go there. Ugh! See? It's very difficult. Let's try that again. See? That was a mistake. Ah, uh, yeah. See, even getting just trying to get to the first level mark three is very difficult. So the awkward steering on this thing. Okay, we're gonna try Super Mario Bros. 2. Now watch how hard it is to actually uh, perform simple. As you can see, um, I'm wobbling a little bit there. Let it, no, I'm gonna try and go to that door. See it? Well, that was kind of automatic. No, I actually wasn't trying to do that. So I'm just trying to go to the right. I'm gonna try to climb up that vine. See? I, I, I keep sliding off. Look, I'm just trying to get up there. You see how hard it is? And I keep ducking. See, that's, that's a major problem when you're using this for side scrollers. And your character uh, ducks. Look, look, I'm, I'm literally trying to go up there. I'm gonna try to get the mushroom. Look, I actually want to get that cherry, but it's, it's really hard. I will say this though, I think that this definitely works a lot better with the Power Glove. But again, I don't think I don't know if I ever used the Power Glove on Super Mario Bros. 2. You can't really steer yourself uh, while you're jumping in the air. At least not as long as it too. I'm trying to get that heart. Yeah, see how harder that the roll rocker makes a game like Mario 2? <laughs> now we're going to demonstrate some more action but for stalls. Again, they're part here to move eight directions. As you can see, I'm moving around quite strongly, but this thing is very wobbly. just teleported, but now I'm trying to just move around normally. Even a game with more freedom such as this, if the rolling rocker is very hard to, 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 to navigate normally. And all the movement you're currently seeing on screen is me not using me not using the D-pad. I'm really just using the rolling rock right now. And the buttons, of course. Now 
now I'm gonna try some combat. See, uh, uh, I'm doing some regular combat. But it's not that easy. I'm just doing my best to try and get uh, from, from, uh, from one cave to another. It's not that easy. And my arm is actually getting really tired using this right now. Ouch, and I'm poisoned. Well, I'll turn it off before I, I go in. Okay, for a bigger challenge, we're gonna we'll go for Millipede. With the strength of the Roland Rocker um, being a balance board, we're going to, uh, t to test quite a few games with diagonal movement. Oh, okay. Well, bad start. Let me, let me demonstrate like how, how good it moves. As you can see, Millipede's a game that requires uh, that allows you to move uh, up, down, uh, left, right, and all sorts of places. It's re it is rather difficult uh, for for these types of games, but it is, I am showing you actual live proof that this thing is capable of, uh, of not being uh, a complete waste of money. See, I'm controlling Link. I'm going to go up. Now, from what you can see in this footage I, can, I, uh, I have so far, is that the Roland Rocker actually works quite well with like overhead games. Although it's not that easy. Given that it's an early balance board, your character tends to wobble all over the place. Like, watch this. Like, if you ever see my character wobbling awkwardly about, please note that that's what happens when I let go of it. Even balancing it with the towel does not completely leave it without fault. It's actually quite a, kind of an interesting challenge, but I just died there. Moving on. I'm going to demonstrate how hard it is to have, a ba have an actual battle in Final Fantasy with these controls. So you can just walk them around, I'm just going to go down that hole. Okay, now after these monsters strike, look how uh, uh, difficult it is to actually select a move. As you can see, this is me just doing a light tap on the on the rolling rocker. It, mo it moves quite erratically, so you, if you just want to go down one, you end up going down two or three spaces. So positioning this thing with the towel or some sort of other way is highly recommended in order to make sure this thing functions. Though playing through with this thing, I will say that you can actually have a lot of fun with this during RPG fights. Now, with one of my party members poisoned, I'm going to try and use an item. But selecting an item, as you, uh, oh, I, as you can see so far, will probably go, will provide, a provide a difficult task.
See, these erratic movements are what happens if you don't position the board properly. So be prepared to have a lot of uh, uh, frustrations trying to get to the, your chem board. I just want to get the drink. The drink! No, I just want to... Come on! Come on! Oh, come on. I need the item or... Just come on. Get, get down to that. Okay, now I just gotta wait. And that, my friends, is just one battle of Final Fantasy on the World Rocker. And if you couldn't tell from that little bit of uh, footage I used, selecting even one thing with, the, with this thing's wonky movement is very hard. Now, just in case anyone thinks that I'm faking this with a different controller, here's the here's the first controller input. Follow the wire. Can you see? It connects to the roll rocker along with my regular controller plugged in. The close-ups are just to help. Uh, deal with the the footage problem. All right, to kick things up a bit, we're gonna try out the license game, Tengen Tetris. And again, remember, I'm only going to use uh, to move the uh, puzzle pieces. So I'll, I'm gonna try as much music with this. As you can see, it it, it, um, it, it drops quite a bit. See, it's, it actually moves the pieces quite faster than I want it to, because it's quite speedy. See, I'm just trying to get to that piece, right? <sighs> yeah. See, reg regular Tetris, uh, I mean, without using this thing, is actually a lot easier. And this act, this act has, has quite, an, uh, uh, quite a big obstacle in just putting pieces in where you want them to. See, look, I wasn't even trying to do that. Like, it's... Come on. Go down, go down. This thing. Yeah, could you imagine trying to play this thing with, uh, uh, with your feet um, like standing up? And I really mean like like standing up, like like like, like not putting it on the ground with your feet and sitting it in a chair, but like actually like uh, as the box uh, showed. This is not. This is not easy. And let's see, it could, this definitely adds quite a bit of challenge to puzzle games. Come on. I'm gonna stop. <sighs> okay, we're gonna do some Galaga. As you can see, I'm moving simply from up to right. Quite easy to do with the roller rocker. And it is still capable of functioning with many games. You can see the roller rocker is not a completely worthless hunk of plastic. Okay, now we're going to, going to attempt a Nightmare on Elm Street. 
This game thankfully does not require any diagonal movement, so hopefully it's a bit easier. Now you can see that the house, all well, the first three houses are completely randomized, or like say I was able to go down for the broken calls. I'm making good progress so far, but oh yeah, this thing is not make uh, jumping is one of your is going to be one of your major enemies using this thing. You see, I'm just wobbling over the place just trying to get onto a platform. Ah. And I keep falling off. See? Not an easy feat. I think I just want to get back on. I have to hold down on the on on the on the board just to punch that spider because I can't punch him just standing up. By the way, you can only take five hits before you uh, if you lose a life, just for the record. Ugh. See, just trying to keep still um, is going to be an enemy that you won't find when you play a game. At least when you won't find it as a physical enemy in the game. Like, I, I'm losing all my lives, I just want to get that one bone. I just gotta let go of it. See, I'm just gonna go try and go down and try to fight the first boss. If, uh, which is Freddy's hit pair of balls. See, not an easy way. Not very easy to control with this thing. And I'm already going to sleep because I took way too many hits. Now, I would, I could usually get through this first level without taking a single hit, or even just one, regularly. But I'm providing a bigger chance that I'll be using this. I'm just going to stay and still punch this guy. By the way, just for a quick, uh, for newcomers who haven't played this game, when in the dream world, en enemies become stronger. So those guys you see would normally be rats, but you'd have to duck the punch. Ah, and I'm almost... Oh wait, I've already lost my first uh, set of lives. Uh, Right now we're going to try Paperboy. This is a bit of a different experience, considering that you sort of move diagonally, but it's kind of on a fixed angle. So I'm just going to try and get through Monday using the Roller Rocker. This is actually the one game I actually have the most fun with using this thing. I'm going to speed up. You see it jerks quite a bit around, and I didn't want to crash into it. Yeah, the constant wobbling of this LJ and accessory um, kind of steers you a lot into enemies. I actually had to use a towel to adjust the board because it constantly kept like sw uh, 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 sliding down, causing me to break quite a bit. But I will say that this game actually is quite a lot of fun uh, uh, using this rare uh, balance board. Heck, I'd say it's kind of like the one game. Oh, whoops! The one game uh, I'd recommend uh, using this thing for. Well, this it's, uh, uh, the NES Advantage. I, 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 I was talking about Paperboy. That is. Yeah, I'm, um, you see, you're probably going to feel all like a drunkard uh, but, uh, doing the constant steering. See, I just crashed into that one guy again. Uh, I wasn't trying to crash into the sun, I just wanted to throw that paper. Yeah, it really holds uh, up on the board to speed up. 
I'm gonna quickly run, try run through the obstacle course. By the way, this thing is not easy to get through. Making that jump is very hard. And I just crashed. Now this is going to be a bit of a challenge because if anyone out there has played this game is watching this video, you know that you'll get, you're going to have to double tap to, to run. And, and you think that with the lovely nature of, of this board, it, running would be easy, but it's not. See, I'm just going to pick up a weapon, and, I, and I'm running when I don't want to. Okay. And I'm, I'm trying to attack those guys. As you can see, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm double tapping my best to try and... Uh, into those enemies, and it's being really picky how it responds. I basically almost have to tap like three times instead of like two times just to get it to work, and I'm just running into the wall like that. I wasn't planning. I I wasn't planning to do that. But beat em ups uh, give, give you the opportunity to use this thing in all eight directions. See, and I'm doing and I'm doing circles to see how it's working. And I'm running even when I don't want to. Come on, go, go. Thank goodness I can actually use weapons in this thing, or else this will be hard. Come on, Alex, go there. Oh, whoops. Unlike Paperboy, um, which was on a fixed angle, this isn't, so you basically have to use a lot of your might to steer your character around. And, I just to, and once again, as you see right there, when I was just running through it, I had to do like three taps. I just had to do four taps there. Now, if you uh, uh, could, could imagine uh, uh, this thing actually working in the AVGN's review, it would probably be a, a bit of a different story. But I'm getting it to work right now. I may quite poorly, but it's still really hard to use. Now let me try to show you some, some more action of this thing using an LJ game, Spider-Man Return to Sinister Six. See, I'm just going to try and pull. Punch that guy. See him moving. It's moving fine. I'm you know, jumping all over the place because of, well, this thing tilts a lot. As you can see live, I'm actually using this thing quite well. That's going to, I'm just going to try and get that. You see, I just wanted to go duck, uh, to, to duck to get that uh, web cartridge, but this thing wobbles around quite a bit, so it's not that easy. You see, I'm just like trying to climb on the building. You have to press up in the air to do that. By the way, this is very hard, especially when um, combat is kind of a requirement to beating up some of these guys. Because you only get like 10 shots of web for your cartridge. So as you know, using this thing um, um, for, for a big combat heavy game is not, it's not easy. And again, in just a few seconds, my arm is literally getting really tired just, just trying to move Spider-Man around. I, get, I can definitely see why there are... There are quite, quite a few of these... Uh, um, well, actually, I, I mean, actually I can see now why quite a few of these would probably be returned back in the day, because this thing is not the easiest thing to use. Okay, I'm just going to stop it up because like, I'm getting really tired of this. 
as you can see, I'm just trying to go and shoot, shoot, shoot the blue guy. Now, for the record, that guy gives you like the first machine gun you'll need for the game. Radio. See that? There's me too again. I'm just trying to shoot like that green guy who keeps them. See, and I'm getting stunned, so I'm just trying to aim. This requires a lot of body movement, so whether you're using your your, your full body or, or just like one arm, uh, as I am on my bed, this is no easy task. Now let me demonstrate again me wanting to go up to the uh, to, to a to a, a higher floor. Now I actually said third, accidentally said thirty first, but I actually meant thirty third. No, I just have to hold it up actually in the way because the light taps aren't going to do jack crap. Now you see, I'm actually faring a lot better now, but I have to hold down the B button to use my foot power. Maybe you know, no. And I just died asleep. Now see, I actually would have had a higher chance if I actually was able to like play it without the rolling rocker and just use like the, the, uh, a regular controller, or even just the or even the NES Advantage or NES Max. But this balance board makes things a lot harder to aim with, especially for overhead games. Okay, now you're here you're gonna see me test the classic Super Mario Brothers with this accessory. Ready? Here we go. As you can see, I can move right and left. That's normal. I'm gonna get the mushroom, but I'm gonna wait for it to come to me. Now, see, in normal circumstances, if I were playing with a good controller, I'd run into it. Yeah, but I'm not doing that right here. When the see, one of the biggest issues I have with the Roland Rocker is like you can't steer yourself in the air or smoothly as you would with the regular D-pad. But so far, I don't seem to be having too many troubles. But your arm can get rather tired with this thing. I do a lot of skidding around with this, with this honking thing. I'm just going to try to get to the end. So I'm just going to keep holding it to the right to get to the end. Now that wasn't too bad, but normally I'd be able to get to that a lot faster uh, using just the regular controller. Now, okay, for our last game, we're going to play Gotcha, the sport. Now, some of you might be a bit confused on why I chose this game, because it's the Zapper game. Well, believe it or not, uh, Gotcha actually requires using uh, the control pad for movement as a form of uh, moving your character around while using the Zapper to shoot your enemies. So, uh, this actually makes it the one Zapper game where uh, moving using the controller while, while you zap enemies is essential. Now, some might be quick to point out, but wait, didn't the Ventures of Bayou Billy do that? Uh, yes, but technically Bayou Billy gave you an option where you could actually uh, select a, a certain game mode to use the zapper instead of the controller for, for the stages where you have to shoot people. So technically, Gotcha is the one uh, zapper game where they made it a requirement to use the control uh, using a, a, a D-pad for moving your character around. But as you can see in this review, I'm using the Rolling Rocker. This actually works pretty good. Now, as you can, now in this game, we have to try and get the, get the fly by shooting it. It's actually quite smooth. And I just got shot. I'm actually quite comfy using the Roland Rocker on this game. 
Now I'm gonna try and shoot this one guy who's, who's going away with my flag. See, quite smooth. And given this thing is quite gigantic, I actually think I prefer using this thing over the control pad, even though that's a lot smaller. I gotta say, if LJ intended uh, to got the Roland Rocker to be used with Gotcha, uh, mainly, uh, they succeeded. Because I actually have, I'm actually really enjoying this stuff right here. Now I'm just gonna make it back with with this. As soon as I shoot that next uh, that next guy that's stealing my flag again. Just one. I'm gonna try Marvel's X Men. I'm gonna be really careful with this. And because you gotta press left very gently. Um, now you're now you are kind of quite weak this game, so I'm gonna try and just go up. Not having any luck. You know the sound. This game has quite a mediocre soundtrack, but I have to say this is probably my one, my one favorite tune of the whole game. You see where the sound that's the low in health noise. <sighs> you see, I, I, I just want to go through. Oh, I just died. It's hard. Alright, now we're trying out Zelda 2 the Adventure Blink. Things are going to get a lot more challenging. I always love doing that. Now, moving fine so far. The big one of the bigger. Uh, well, just. Whoa, I wasn't pl planning to do that. Now, one of the big issues I have with the rolling rocker on size scrollers is maneuvering yourself in the air. As you can see, I'm, I'm just trying to duck. kind of a bit of a challenge or oh. yeah this thing makes uh, make side scrollers of uh, quite, quite difficult especially when needing to duck as you, as you can see um, holding holding down the, the board actually can wear out your, your arms quite a bit. I'm just trying to go up into that palace. My character just keeps moving to the right. If anyone else here has had this issue, feel free to comment and let me know. As you can see, if I was using just the D-pad, I could actually move Link around a lot easier. 
but as but with the rolling rocker, as I'm trying to go for full experience, it's, it's not that it's not that easy. Also, I have no idea why it does that weird uh, side thing, but it, it seems like you can only do that on the board. Let's move on. Okay, now remember, you gotta hold up to use the turbo in, in this game. You may recall seeing this as the last game uh, Retro Red TV did it and they're sold separately uh, first episode. I'm actually streaming quite okay, but just imagine having to hold up to use, uh, to use the turbo in this. This is actually one of the, the, uh, the few games I've been able to play on this game that actually, yeah, actually isn't that bad. With, with this honking uh, uh, piece of plastic. I actually made it back through the first checkpoint. The steering is kind of difficult with this thing, because since I'm, in, I'm only using my, my left arm to steer this and with my palm on the center. Giving my arm quite a workout. I guess this thing could be could, could be fun for driving games, though. Uh, I I don't say uh, this thing does not work well with RC Pro. Yeah, I'll tell you that. And I don't have any other games of the racing. Oh, oops, I crashed that. Every racing games at the moment, such as like Race America, Tesla Sweat, which I wanted to, but I can't. So actually, could do. I'm actually going quite a few distance with this thing, and I wasn't sure if Retro Rocker TV ever got through the first checkpoint when they recorded the footage uh, for their Roll Rocker usage for their sold separately first episode. So I think I did quite well here. Oh, I actually went to the second checkpoint. I'm just going to go a bit further and see how far I can get. I just barely coast into that. So yeah, it's really a quite an interesting thing to use. It, it's, it works a little bit better with Power Glove, you, and you don't have to input codes to use this. Though, given that that's a balance score, I get I don't understand why you would have to. But okay, so we've had uh, quite a amount of amount of games tested. Let's see, we've had one action adventure game, one stealth action adventure game, three role playing games, one puzzle game, two beat em ups, one racing game, three arcade ports, and ten side scrollers. Quite an impressive amount of games we've had tested. So, after all that testing, what can I say about the Roland Rocker? Well, let me start off by saying this. For the record, you can rest assured that the issues anyone who has with the sport are warranted and understandable by me. A weight limit of 100 pounds, its difficulty in maneuvering, and the cheap feel of this accessory overall. Yeah, it is worth mentioning that this giant controller didn't have the best build quality, as evidenced by the sound it makes when I knock on it in this clip right here. So yeah, the controller isn't exactly the most functional item, but does it really deserve the hate it deserves despite the fact that not many people talk about it? Honestly, no. I mean, yeah, you can, it, it, it has weight issues, the functionality is, well, pretty off, but I don't think it's really that bad. In fact, I'd almost put it on the same level as Zelda's Adventure and Hotel Mario on the CDI, and yes, even some of the LJM published games on the NES and Super Nintendo. I will say, it was quite ambitious for uh, an accessory of this caliber. To, to be released in... Ow. Honestly, for the first attempt at any balance board, 
this thing is honestly quite uh, ahead of its time. And we would get a Wii balance board, which would basically be a better version of this thing today. So, I guess I like, you gotta give the world of Wonder quite a bit of respect. When you really get down to it, the Rolling Rocker can actually be a lot of fun, provided you um, play it with some easy games. Now you're probably wa wondering, can I recommend the Rolling Rocker? Well, yes, but just keep in mind a few things if you're planning to buy this controller. For one, it is not uh, a cheap controller. My copy alone, loose, costs $133.03 in Canadian money, mind you. Second. This is an experimental old controller designed not for serious competitive play, but more as a look back on as a controller that you pull up for fun like the Power Glove every once in a while to experiment with some easy games. And three, it's a controller not designed for heavy gamers. So if you're going to use this thing, do it like me and put it on the left or right side of your bed if you're playing on a TV in your room, or if you're in the living room, uh, place it on the left or right side of the couch if you're sitting down on one. Or on it if your feet if you want to put it on the ground. That concludes this review. Join me next time as we take a look at a game from my childhood that has gotten too much flock over the years. And we'll see if is this if this game is really deserving all the hate it's gotten, or if it was a misunderstood a uh, title that, de that deserves a second chance. Peace.